Hey everybody, Jordan here with Fantastic Microbes and where to find them. So we had a lot of fun on last week's Small Adventure Saturday where we went to the Provo Canyon and found a lot of really cool microbes. Recently I've been inspired by some YouTube channels that I really like. One's called Jartopia and the other one's called Life in Jars. Essentially these channels create these small ecospheres and jars and they're able to make them last for a really long time. And so I decided it'd be kind of fun to do the same, but just for microbes. So even though we saw a lot in last week's adventure, there were still a ton more in last week's sample that I collected. And so we're going to take a look at these again. So here's our sample. There's lots of small things floating and swimming around. Some of these are crustaceans, some of them are insects. And we'll take a look at those um, and maybe some worms here or there but we'll also look at some other small things. We're gonna start off with a mystery item. I have no idea what this is, so if any of you are out there and you have a good guess, go ahead and be my guest. Anyway, I think it's some sort of uh, insect or crustacean. Uh, those big circles are uh, probably the gonads or egg pouches. Here we have a diatom. Now we're going to take a look at this Cyclops here. Now in last week's episode, we showed one of these, but it got squished under the microscope and it was a lot more colorful. Uh, but this one's really cool because you can see these big round oval things in the back. Um, those are its egg pouches. So this is a female that we're looking at um, and she will eventually deposit those eggs um, in the future. Now this little guy is really cool. Uh, this is a small uh, green uh, single cell organism. I believe this is some sort of species of Euglena. So there it is in the dark field and then here it is in the bright field. So these are photosynthetic uh, or phytoplankton. Now we're going to take a look at some Vorticella. So here's a rotifer, and in just a second, I'll pan over from the Vorticella to this rotifer, just so you can kind of see the uh, sense of scale that we're looking at here. These are the same rotifers that we saw in last week's video, because uh, it is in the same sample. Uh, but yeah, that's the size difference that we're looking at. Now one cool thing that I wanted to point out about some of these plants are these round uh, oval-like things that you see here. Um, not the really small green ones, but the ones that are kind of sticking out on the edges of the plant. Um, this is called the plant's stomata, or, or stoma, um, and this is where gas exchange occurs. So, it's pretty cool. And here are some little critters just roaming around on it. This guy was really neat. I don't know what exactly it is, but it kind of looks just like a paisley drop. Now I want to focus on these small uh, little circles here on the left. Now these are uh, some sort of diatom, and here it is moving in real time. And I'm gonna put it on, here's a time lapse right here, but moving a lot more quickly. So some diatoms are able to move on their own, and some of them aren't. Now, I saw this ciliate over here. All of a sudden, it bumped into this diatom, and I thought that it was trying to eat the diatom for a second, but it didn't really look like it was trying to eat. It kind of just looked like they got stuck together. What I know about diatoms that move is that they secrete a kind of mucus that they kind of glide across. So I'm guessing that the ciliate just got stuck to the mucus of this guy. I could be wrong, though. Eventually it broke free, and it didn't look too interested in coming back for more. Now 
going to look at another ostracod. We looked at a couple of these last week, and so here it is to show you this kind of the sense of scale. Ostracods are pretty cool. They can be carnivores, herbivores, scavengers, or filter feeders. I'm not sure exactly which kind this one is, but it was really cool because it was kind of opening up for me a little bit, so you can see the inside. Most ostracods don't have a heart, but instead they do gas exchange and other things like through either their antenna or different parts of their shell. Some of them have one eye, some of them have compound eyes. This is a really diverse group of crustaceans, and they've been around for millions of years. Here's a really cool ciliate. I spent forever chasing this guy around. It was swimming around like crazy, and then it finally stopped. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to look at this guy's cilia, or those little hair-like things, in slow motion. So here we are looking at it in regular motion, and then here we are at uh, 240 frames per second uh, compressed down. So this is with the slow motion on just like a regular iPhone, so it's not that good of a slow-mo camera. As you can see, it's really hard to catch the motion of these guys. So there's still a lot more in this sample. I thought it'd be fun to look at the sand and the silt. So this is what it looks like. I didn't find too many living things moving and swimming through here. There are, there were a couple of ciliates and stuff, but it mostly looked like a asteroid field. Okay, now we're gonna look at some other stuff. Oh, there looked like a predator was swimming by. I tried to catch these larger critters, but I had a pretty difficult time. And so eventually I just decided to go for the worms, which I was trying to get last week, but I wasn't able to. There was one worm that was inside this twig and here it is. I'm only going to show the front half of this worm because the last half got squished and it doesn't look too pretty. It's kind of cool to see all of the veins in this guy. Or girl. I don't, I don't know what it is. Now we're going to move on to a insect larva. And I've shown insect larvas before, but I wanted to talk about a couple new things with this. Now, first of all, the feet that I've been talking about in the front, apparently these are external gills and it actually breathes through those feet. So, pretty cool fun fact. Now this particular larva had a colony of organisms growing on the back of it. At first I thought that this was some sort of species of Vorticella because it had a somewhat bell-like shape to it and it was spinning food towards it. However, these ones looked a little bit different because they all seemed connected by these thick branches. Vorticella are able to contract their long stalks, and these ones didn't seem too phased by the movement of the insect larva, so I don't know if these ones were able to contract at all. My best guess for this organism is Zothamnium. This is the most popular thing that I've found when looking up connected colonies of ciliates. Alright, so that'll wrap it up for this one. I think we're going to probably set this one aside for another couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, and then we'll revisit it and see if there's any differences. Before we head out, I want to give a big shout out to my patron on Patreon. That's right, I just started a Patreon account for those that are super interested and want extra bonus content and behind the scenes footage. Um, I am filming a bunch of extra stuff for those people that want to help keep this dream alive and help fund my projects. Anyway, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming up around the corner, so I hope to see you guys on next week's adventures, and until then, see you next time.